Let us discuss negotiation sets, their basic properties and features. We would like to start from the idea of so-called intuitionistic set. This concept has been introduced by Choker more than 20 years ago as a crisp version of Atanasov's intuitionistic fuzzy sets. Choker sets are also known as ortho pairs. The notion of intuitionistic set, um, it seems that it has been widely accepted or at least tolerated by the vast majority of interested mathematicians, even if these sets do not have much to do with intuitionistic logic or intuitionistic philosophy of mathematics. Be as it may assume that we have non-empty universe X. We define intuitionistic set A on X as an ordered pair, A1, A2, um, such that A1 and A2 have empty intersection. Sometimes we call these parts AT and AF. T like true, this is the set of members of A, and F like false, the set of non-members. Here are some basic operations on intuitionistic sets which are defined in the following manner. As you can see, union of two intuitionistic sets um, is a new intuitionistic set such that on the left side we have union of A1 and B1 and on the right side we have intersection of A2 and B2. In case of intersection of A and B we have intersection of a1 and b1 truth sets and union of falsity sets. The reason is um, these operations are defined in the following way because we would like to obtain another intuitionistic set. The same can be said about complement and about inclusion and about difference. One can prove that these operations satisfy the following properties. Idempotency, commutativity, associativity, distributivity, absorption, and the Morgan laws. The set of all intuitionistic sets on X with these operations forms a so called the Morgan algebra. On the other hand, we may consider double sets, which are also known as flow or nested sets. Again, we have an ordered pair A1 and A2, but now A1 should be contained in A2. As we can see here. Basically, the operations on double sets are defined in the following manner. As you can see, union of two double sets is new ordered per such that on the left side, the left component is A1 and, and it, its union with B1, and right component is union of A2 and B2, analogously in case of intersection. Again, the idea is that we want to obtain another double set, that uh, the class of double sets should be closed under these operations. The same about complement, inclusion, and difference. Moreover, there exists one-to-one -one correspondence between intuitionistic and double sets. If A1, A2 is a double set, they, then A1 and minus complement of A2 this pair is an intuitionistic set, clearly. But what about negotiation sets? Well, in some sense, they are based on the idea of double sets, but their operations are taken from the universe or from the world of intuitionistic sets. First of all, we have the very basic definition. Okay, as you can see, negotiation set is just a double set, nested set. A1 is contained in A2. We say that A1 is range of necessity of A, while A2 is its range of admissibility. What about operations? Assume that we have certain index set J and a family of negotiation sets on X. We define the following operations, generalized minimalization of necessities and generalized relative maximalization of necessities. At first glance, mm, they seem to be artificial or difficult or unnecessarily complicated. But let us assume that J 
consists only of two elements, one and two, like here. Now we obtain A dot B, intersection of necessity ranges and union of admissibility ranges. Now A cross B. On the right side we have intersection of admissibility ranges and on the left side we have intersection of this intersection with union of necessity sets. Why is that so? From the mathematical point of view, the reason is that we want to obtain a negotiation set again. But we may consider these sets as different points of view of some agents. There are some objects in A and in B and our agents uh, there are some objects rather in X and our agents A and B, um, they describe their ranges of necessity and admissibility. Then our new operations describe two variants of compromise between them. In the first case, more things become acceptable, admissible, tolerated, and fewer things become necessary. It's here. The second case is nearly symmetrical more things are necessary this is here but with the following restriction and fewer things are acceptable are possible undoubtedly we have certain connection with model operators of necessity and possibility with box and diamond an example adam bernard and clara are planning a joint trip by car they are discussing which items should be taken to the trunk they want to determine which things are necessary and which are only optional. And for example, this is the list of items. Bowl, shoe polish, flashlight, tent, and so on and so on. Here are their negotiation sets. For example, Clara thinks that A, map, and H, tent, are necessary, obligatory. And she's able to discuss, of course, A and H, but also D and K, namely first aid kit and guitar. She thinks that they are acceptable. Now, A, B and C, Adam, Bernd and Clara can perform a kind of discussion of negotiation process, as it's here. For example, in the third case, as we can see, Bernard and Clara use cross operation to form their initial compromise. And then they use dot operation to discuss this compromise, the proposition with Adam. And finally, they obtain this. Um, note that in each of these three cases, they are only sure that a map should be taken. But they obtain different, three different ranges of admissibility. Their discussion, their debate may take longer. We do not say that this is a kind of uh, complete algorithm. This is only framework or model of this kind of negotiation. Here are some very basic algebraic properties. Both operations are idempotent, commutative and associative, but there is only one absorption law. Because the following operations do not hold. Here we have counterexamples for distributivity. This says here and here and for this absorption law consider a b such that and you obtain this well strict inequality in some sense we may discuss three special types of negotiation sets empty 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 and universe and universe universe the following equalities are true that for example a cross empty n gives us empty n a dot xp gives us xp the set of all negotiation sets on x forms a structure which is slightly weaker than lattice and slightly stronger than semi lattice as we could see it satisfies only one absorption law there is no full analogy between empty n and lattice bottom zero, 
and there is no full analogy between xn and lattice top 1. But we see that xp plays the role of 1 if dot and cross are treated as disjunction and conjunction. Note that this identification allows us to say that empty n behaves in a way like 0. However, this correspondence is only partial. Note that a cross empty n does not result in a, but in empty n. We assumed by default that our basic objects, the elements of x, are in some sense mutually independent and peacefully coexisting. However, these assumptions do not exhaust the whole richness of reality. We may easily imagine that there is a kind of conflict between some of our objects, elements of x, not be between our negotiation sets, but the objects. For example, there are mutually exclusive scenarios or logical formulas like phi and not phi. We shall discuss these questions in the next presentation about negotiation sets. Moreover, we can think about establishing topological space in this framework, assuming that, for example, um, negotiation topological space, negotiation topology is closed under arbitrary dot operations and finite cross operations. But other possibilities um, also should be discussed. Finally, we have the following references to Choker's works, to Kandel and El Sheikh and the Agud and Haza paper about some types of compactness in double topological spaces, and uh, to my paper about general framework for negotiation sets. Thank you very much.